Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Genesis chapter 7 verse 3, Romans chapter 4 verse 11, and 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for another day. I thank you for your mercy and your great grace. We love you, Lord. We praise you. I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Genesis chapter seven, verse three, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. All right, and so um, this is talking about, of course, the birds that were entering the ark. And this is also foreshadowing of those who are to be taken in the rapture, those who are to be kept safe right and so why birds why would god use the analogy of keeping birds safe well we know that birds um are the type of animal that can find their refuge kind of anywhere right they can kind of build nests in holes they don't really need much specific now now there are certain types of birds that need um old trees in order to nest but here specifically um a, a bird can build a nest just about anywhere right any any crevice any hole any area um they can kind of go into it and find refuge and that's the way our lives are right we we can go into any situation whether we're abased or abound and we can find our refuge why because our refuge is not actually in the environment our refuge is inside of us and that is in Christ Jesus he is inside of us right and so we can find peace wherever we go the same way that like a bird would a, a bird doesn't care about um, what it's going to wear in the morning it doesn't care about how it's going to find some food right it, it just flourishes where it is right and so if you give it the ark as its place of safety it's going to build a home there right and so and that's the same thing for us God has given Christ Jesus as our ark of safety he has promised that he's going to provide for us he's promised that he's going to be our provision when he comes when he comes to take his bride right and so we can rest in that we can build a nest in that we can say hey regardless of what my circumstances are screaming at me right now now, I'm just going to build a nest right here. And I'm going to say, Lord, you tell me when and where to move. You tell me when the ark is going to get opened up. You tell me all of that stuff. But for right now, I'm just going to rest here and I'm going to, to thrive where I am. And so what, whatever you tell me to do here, this is where I'm going to stay here until you move me, right? So that's how our attitude has to be. We have to in place flourish, right? Imagine how many generations of, of birds were birthed in that ark. Imagine how many birds were there when they opened up the ark door. There had to be many more generations. Why? Because um. Uh, a, a mo not Moses Noah was um willing to let the birds go free in order to go find land right he wasn't afraid that the dove species would go extinct because he let a dove go no there were much more than one um pair of doves now right so that he didn't have to worry about oh my goodness that dove didn't come back right no he didn't have to think like that why because there were generations of doves by that time right they they had been in the ark for months months and months I want to say it was like what four months or something um of just floating around without it raining and so um we have to put our hope and our trust in God and and we have to know that you know what it, it's gonna be okay we are our our found in our place of refuge our rock we can run into this rock and we can be safe God is going to come through with everything he said he would even if we don't see it right now we can put our hope and our trust in the refuge that he has provided and we can thrive right where we are 
because the hope is found inside of us and that is Christ Jesus all right and so the second verse that the Lord gave me was Romans chapter 4 verse 11 he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised the purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised so that righteousness would be counted to them as well all right and so um let's start from the beginning it says he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised so even before um abraham received circumcision he was righteous right he was already right with god why because he believed what god said right he was already on the right page he was already walking with god the circumcision was just an outward sign or symbol to the rest of the world to let the rest of the world know the outside right the the part that is unstable the part that is doing its own thing it lets them know that this one is set apart right it doesn't let abraham know that he's set apart abraham already knows that he's set apart Abraham already knows that he's taken care of. Abraham already has the promises. Abraham's already in the ark, right? The ark is inside of Abraham. Abraham is inside of the ark. He's already built his nest there, right? But but for the rest of the world to see, right, that's what the circumcision represents. It represents an outward sign of what we already know has already taken place the righteousness has already taken place because of belief because of faith right it says he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised the purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised so that righteousness would be counted to them as well so now um, Abraham has become a symbol, right? He is a symbol of faith. He's a symbol of believing in a God that you can't see. He's a symbol of believing what that God said and walking in that way, right? First. And, and all of those things are, are based on that seed of faith, right? Once he believed, boom, righteous. God said, I'm in parting to you righteousness um he believed god and it was accounted unto him as righteousness his belief was accounted as righteousness so for us our belief in christ is counted unto us as accounted unto us as righteousness we don't have to actually follow through with anything yet it's just the belief right it is just the 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 symbol of abraham of the fact that you believe god you believe that jesus is the son of god just like god said and you believe that he died for your sins you believe that your sins are atoned for he is the christ and he it will be lord over your life boom you are righteous right you believed boom, you're righteous. Okay. So it's, it's not the deeds that make us righteous. Our righteousness does not come from that, right? Remember our righteousness, me and you, when we do righteous deeds and things, our righteousness is as filthy rags, right? God looks at that and he's like, oh, that's the, you, you fall short. You did a great job right there, but all this other stuff, right? Your heart, your motive, your intention, your, the way that you looked at this person, the, the smallest thing, all of that stuff is falling short, right? Um, we could try as hard as we might. There's always going to be something that falls short, right? And so that's why we need the righteous covering of Christ Jesus, which comes from our faith in him, right? And then all these other things are, are, are coming into place after we have believed and so we are counted as righteous and then we um on the outside do things that show that um this thing that had that is inward has already 
taking place all right and so just like the birds you know the birds have their home built inside of them why because they build nests wherever they go right so that nest is inside of them it's ingrained in them it's in their heart it's in their mind so wherever you put that bird it when it's ready to have its babies when it's ready to settle down it's going to start pulling stuff from its environment right what may look like a bunch of sticks in someone else's eyes to that bird, those sticks are a nest right it, it may look like a bunch of trash to somebody but but for a bird that looks like insulation right and and it's going to keep me nice and warm why because it's ingrained that nest is it's instinctive inside of that bird and that's why God always sends us his bird scripture he's letting us know that you have to live in this environment and see it from my perspective right? I, I put the nest in you. I put the peace in you. I put the stability in you. I put the wholeness in you, right? It's not based on what, what's going on around you, your your health, your all these other things that your, your family's acting out, everything's showing out, people just acting a fool, or your job is going down, or something's happening. That's not where the peace is. The peace is inside of you, right? That peace is in you. It is ingrained in you in Christ Jesus. Why? Because your refuge is in him. He's in you. You're in him. All right. And so um, the third verse that the Lord gave me was 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 12. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. All right. And so this is talking about that battle um, with the king of Moab. Then it's involving um, Jehoram. Remember Jehoram? Um, he stopped sending the sheep. Um, the king of Moab stopped sending the sheep when um, King Ahaz died. And so his his son, um, Jehoram, was like, hey, got to go to battle because I want those sheep and so instead of just going to battle by himself he had to drag some people along with him right and so of course he he brings the king of Edom and he brings um King Jehoshaphat King Jehoshaphat feared God he and but he was willing to fight with him to go out into battle with him but he feared God um Jehoram did not all right and so Jehoram went out without seeking God, without doing anything. He took all the people into battle. They couldn't find water. They couldn't find the provision, right? But just like we said, provision is in you, right? That God is in you. The refuge is in you. The peace is in you. Jehoram um, didn't have that peace inside of him. Neither did the king of Edom right? But remember, Jehoshaphat feared God. So what was his solution? Find out where God, find out where, who knows something about God, right? He, he automatically knew. He may not have known who the prophet was, but he knew to call on the name of the Lord, right? So his automatic instinct was, who is someone who can get a word for us? And so I want to say it was like a servant or the soldier who said this, who said, um, uh, Jehoshaphat, that, said Elisha is somewhere around here he he lives around he's the one who poured the water on Elijah's hands and so that's when they went and looked for Elisha and so um that is a sign that inside Jehoshaphat even when he made wrong decisions he had God inside of him right he had the favor of God on him that's why the battle was even won was because the favor of God was on him so the thing is when the the times got tough right? They didn't have any water walking in that environment. Did that mean God wasn't with them? No. God was with Jehoshaphat. Even though he couldn't find water, he knew who to call upon. Why? Because the peace was not in the water. The peace was in him, right? The nest was in him. He had to go look and figure out, hey, how can I get a word from the Lord? Because the word from the Lord will tell me everything I need to know right? It doesn't matter what crazy environment I get into. As long as I know to call upon the name of the Lord, I'm going to be safe. I'm going to be saved. I'm going to be well. It's going to be well with me. And so it says, and Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. And 
Yeah. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. All right. So they all went into Jehoshaphat's ark of safety. Right. In, in that in that thought pattern. So they were able to benefit from Jehoshaphat and what was inside of him, that nest to know to go to God, that nest to know to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for showing us these birds, showing us these people, showing us this nest, God, which is in your son. Lord Jesus, we thank you for helping us to find refuge in you, for helping us to build our home wherever we are in you. Lord God, if there are people who are listening who have not accepted you as your their, their lord and savior or have not called upon your name when they are in distress or in trial maybe they forgot about the nest maybe they forgot about you maybe they forgot that they could call upon the name of the lord lord jesus help them to call upon you now help them to turn off the path that they're on and turn towards your path help them to take hold of your hand lord god help us all to take hold of your hand holy spirit and walk one step at a time we love you we praise you we say thank you holy spirit for leading and guiding us into all truth in jesus name i pray amen all right you guys if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that, amen. One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you could stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, also, go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right. Be blessed and take care.